All right, we are about to go and see River Rose 2 for the first time. Wow. Oh my God. That's it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Drink that in. Pretty emotional, actually. It's mad, isn't it? Like, we've waited so long for this. After a whole year in Australia, spending time with my family and friends, it was time to pack our bags and leave once again. This time, we were finally travelling to Vietnam, where our new boat, a 45-foot catamaran, was being built. We had been waiting for this moment for many months, and the feeling of arriving in Ho Chi Minh was one of relief and anticipation for what was to come. Before we go ahead and show you Ruby Rose 2, which I know you are all super keen for, we just want to rewind a little bit and talk about the process of getting into Vietnam, what's been going on behind the scenes the last, I don't know, six months has taken us bloody yeah, forever to get months. here. Just kind of bring you up to speed on, on that whole process because it's been a long one. Just to backtrack, Nick, you applied for your visa when in like August? July, August. No, July, August. Yeah, it's been, look, it's at the moment, and it's all COVID related, it has taken us a huge amount of time and effort to get into Vietnam. And we are very, very, very thankful to Seawind for just helping us with visa agents, for putting us onto the right people. But um, as we talked about on the Patreon group the other day, it has taken a lot of time, a lot of paperwork. So basically to get permission to get into Vietnam, we've had to come in because obviously we're working with Seawind to kind of kind of get this boat made. So we're not going in as tourists. So we needed uh, permission from the People's Committee, which we got, that took about two months, I think, to get that. Yeah. And then immigration. So the whole visa process was pretty protracted, pretty stressful, I think we'd argue. Yeah, and, and also Vietnam or Ho Chi Minh locked down um, about yeah. a month after you applied for your visa. Yes, yes, so yeah. there was like a lengthy pause. Nick's finally got processed in November. We applied for mine around the same time and that, you know, literally didn't come through until a week before we were due to be here. Yeah. So that last week before flying over to Vietnam was like hectic. A lot of paperwork. Um, a lot of things like travel insurance that had to be comprehensive and cover COVID. There has to be, we had to go and do quarantine in a quarantine hotel. We needed a quarantine taxi to get us to the hotel. And then we had to pay for the PCR test. I have to say that the quarantine hotel was actually pretty good. What's breakfast this morning, eh? Waffles. <laughs> Never get between a bear and its cub, eh? Or Teresa and her waffles. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Feeling so happy and content. Sleep well? Oh my god, I slept so well. Mm -hmm. After a couple of sleepless nights, mm -hmm. I slept so well last night. Yeah. Yeah, the view's pretty spectacular as well. The view's awesome. It's very relieved to be here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we were super excited to get out of hotel quarantine, obviously, and come here. The place that we are house sitting for the next few weeks. We're looking after a dog who's curled up next to Nick's feet right now. And um, yeah, we've got this like amazing pool. Um, yeah, this isn't ours, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> this is very much not the place that we will be. We'd be living in a, in a wicker blanket box <laughs> if we had our own way. So yeah, this is this is just someone has let, you know, a friend of ours has let us house sit. Um, so that's, we're super yeah. appreciative to, yeah. to, 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 the, to that family. Yeah. Um, anyway. Therese. Okay, so obviously the reason why you're watching right now is because you want to see Ruby Rose 2. Um, so I think without further ado, let's just... Go and see our boat. Wow. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty mad. Like we've waited so long for us. Right. Like crazy, you know, two years of like planning this and all right. After giving us a few moments to recover from the shock of seeing Ruby Rose 2 for the first time, Shane was kind enough to give us a full tour of the hull and the build so far. Well, you can see the hull set, right? It's very flat. So the fact that you've got a flat bottom to the hulls does that mean that you're going to get, it generates more lift? Yeah, so the, it generates more lift, but um, the main reason that uh, a lot of modern designs are going for a more flat bottom is it creates laminar flow. So yes. It's basically right. like extending the theoretical waterline length. Right, yeah. So the, the sort of more traditional method was to have the transom 
above the waterline. Yep. So you, you have a lot of rocker in the back. Yep. Which is really good for light speed, um, light air, light speed sailing, but it limits your top speed dramatically. Whereas this uh, enables the boat to yeah, start planing, creating laminar flow, and it really has a big impact on the top end. Uh, and we're finding that the penalty in the lower end is, is far more insignificant in comparison to the gains. So. Okay. Um, also what it does, it, it improves our, uh, the amount you can load the boat up. So with the more traditional method, that's all great in theory if you've got a light boat and the transom is sitting above the waterline. Once yep. you start loading up, because you've got narrower hulls, which it'll immerse quicker, you get the transom below the waterline and you get that penalty. Um, so this is basically just, it's a bit of a different uh, philosophy. Yes, you can see it's um, self-supported on its keels. Yeah, whether you're, whether you're beaching it in the right water or sitting in the factory. What you were saying before, there's less rocker on this hull than on the 1260. Yeah, there's less rocker on the 1370 than the, the 1116, 1260 because we're using a different philosophy of how, how the hull shape is designed. And most modern catamarans are, are now using this, this philosophy. Um, so we're going away from trying to be uh, really focused on, on an efficient hull shape at the hull speed, which yep. is sort of, you know, traditionally boats have all worked around the hull speed being the max yep. theoretical, the max, uh, I guess probably in most cases, the max actual achieved hull speed. We're now able to surpass that by going away from that philosophy. Um, so previously, you'd always try to get the transom to be above the waterline. On the 1370, that's no longer the case because we're generating our own uh, waterline by yep. creating laminar flow. Yep. So when you look at the back of the boat and you've got that nice smooth flow of water, yep. that's sort of tricking the, the water into believing that the whole shape's longer. And, and you achieve that by having that, that flatter transom. So you, you're sort of creating a little bit of a planing effect, a little bit of lift, flatter transom um, and wider hulls. So you're, you're not having that water getting sucked around and yeah. trying to get the transom out of the water so you get a, a smooth exit. You're creating a smooth exit by generating speed. And this, this is basically uh, removing the top limit on the speed that the hull can achieve. Nice. So is that like a similar principle to when like a boat is planing? Like it's yeah, yeah, basically. It's, it's sort of getting a little bit more into that planing mode. Okay. It's not, I wouldn't say that it's gonna plane, no. but it's getting into that sort of zone. Okay. Yeah. Whereas a 1260 will, will never yeah. create that planing effect yeah, in okay. any sort. It's, it's when you push it, you know, you, you get to a point where you're sailing right, nice and everything's really good. And then you go, oh, well, let's get some more sail up and you just sink the hulls more. Yeah. Well, that won't happen with this. Why, so why will the hull sink more? Um, it doesn't have the, the ability to sort of get into that, that zone. With, like, so planing yeah. is, is uh, the 1260 is more of a displacement hull. Yeah. And, and a displacement, a true displacement hull. And a true displacement hull really won't plane. So when you push, put more load on it, push it faster, it really just, it just buries. It puts more load on the, on the lured hull and it just buries. This will take that load. You'll so do the same thing. You'll put the load in the windward, windward hull because of the hull shape, it will be able to take that load and transfer that into more directional speed. Okay. Sweet. We've got the chines, like both inboard and outboard. And look, the main purpose of the chines is to get more volume. So yeah. it's to get more internal volume. They're pretty pronounced, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So we also, the original design um, was actually a bit more horizontal. And I think we did some testing um, and found that that creates, too, that creates slapping, or it can create slapping. Yep. As your waves come up, you can get that slap. So we put this huge, we put a much more, uh, a much uh, uh, less aggressive angle yep. on Champa, and then we put, also put a huge radii on yep. this. So we're creating more of the ability for the water to come and spray away rather than hit a flat surface. Nice. But it's doing the same thing by achieving us to have you know, wider beds in the hulls, more space in the hulls, but still have a narrow water line. Okay, so this is where the escape hatches escape are going to be. Escape hatch, yep. yep. And they're, they're not open, so it's, they're so solid. Yeah, so it's escape uh, panel. Escape panel, like hammer. Yeah, we've got, our, we've got a lot of stiffness built in to the, the molding through the wing deck by having these stringers built in, by having the, the uh, cross stringer through here, which is where the trifold door will arrange. This will also form the drainage for the trifold door. Yep. So you've got a big gutter going across the whole uh, Whole wing deck. Yep. And this is the fuel tank or the water tank? This is the water tank. The water and, tank. And it's been, it's made, been made removable. So we have a panel that gets glued and screwed over the back here. Yep. But if for whatever reason over you know, the next 10, 15 years, if the water tank ruptures, maybe or it needs a full clean. Or someone, do you know what's happened before? 
someone accidentally puts diesel in it, and yes. then you can do nothing about yeah. that apart from change the water tank. Yeah, uh, yeah we've had yeah. that. We've known people that have done that. Yeah. So yeah, so the, the tank is removable. Yeah, that's so clever. you can take the panel off, slide it all the way out. Tanks will be removable. Also, the diesel tanks in the hulls are also removable. A little, little bit more work to go in there because you do have the floor panels, but we've made sure that they are removable without destroying the furniture around it. You know, the fact you can work with uh, like this five axis milling, which means that the mm. you've got really complex shapes here. And the shapes are really complex. It's a pretty complicated shape, no? Yeah, yeah, definitely um, what can be achieved with five axis milling uh, in comparison to hand, Just hand you know, yeah. one-off construction or... I mean, Therese, look at this. It's yeah. beautiful. It is a really... And from here, like this... It's a... Like, I'm a nerd for stuff like this, but this is beautiful. It really is. Nice. Shall we go up inside? All right, guys, we are just going to stop there and uh, pick up next week with the rest of the tour of Ruby Rose 2. We're going to go inside the hulls. Shane is going to show us like everything that's going on in there and um, you'll really be able to get a sense of the space inside. Uh, but we want to do the episode justice and um, not rush it. So I'm going to leave that for an entirely different episode. It will be the next one coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss it. Um, let us know what you guys think. I mean, we're excited. Are you guys excited? Is the boat bigger than you're expecting? Is it, you know, kind of meeting your expectations? Um, it's certainly meeting ours. We are absolutely pumped. So let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. I already talked about subscribing. See you next time.